Shalom, brethren. Once again, you are welcome to Rematic with Pastor Jerry. That is the word of God in my spirit for us this evening. Um, I want to talk to us about the word that God has put in my heart and in my mind and in my spirit. And the word is this, that repentance is deliverance. Repentance is deliverance. Repentance is equal to deliverance. What do I mean? You see, in the Old Testament, in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, Solomon, after Solomon has built a temple for the Lord, and Solomon dedicated the temple to the Lord. And Solomon prayed a prayer and said to God, as we have dedicated this temple to you, and that anyone who comes to this temple to pray, hear and answer their prayer. Whatever the predicament, whatever the situation, when they pray, turn it towards coming here or turn it towards this temple, please hear and answer. And Solomon said, it doesn't, whatever the sin that the people have sinned and they are afflicted by reason of the sin, if they repent and turn back to you, hear and answer. Amen? And God came to Solomon. And this was God's response in 2 Chronicles chapter 7. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7. This is God's response. God said in 2 Chronicles 7 verse 11. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house, and all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord. And in his own house he prosperously affected. Solomon finished the house of the Lord before he built his own house. We have to finish the Lord's house. It is the kingdom first and his righteousness. Then every other thing shall be added. That is the order. It is not your house first. It is God's house first then before your house. And the Bible says Solomon did all what was all the thing that was in his heart. So somebody said, the eyes, with the eyes we see, but by the heart we lead. I mean, our our eyes give us heart, and our heart lead us in the way. Well, I love that. So be led by your heart. Don't be led by your sight, but by your heart. Because God commune and communicate to us through our hearts. Amen. So follow your heart, not your head. The Bible says, whatever Solomon, God has put in Solomon had to do, Solomon did it. So when God puts something in your heart, do it. Don't consult with your friends. Don't consult with unbelievers. Don't consult with people who did not hear what God has said to you. The psalmist said, do not doubt in the dark what you are told in the light. When God sp spoke to you, it was light. But when you come out of that place, circumstances may look dark. And when you talk to your friend, they were not there when the light was turned on and you heard the Lord. So don't consult with your friend with what God talked to you about. At least consult with your spiritual leader who may give you counsel. Not with your friends who have no enlightenment or divine insight into the things that you want to do. Praise the Lord. Rather find someone who has done what you're trying to do by the Spirit and learn from. Not because when God speaks to you, it's unique, it's special. I received that for myself. Praise the Lord. So follow your heart, not your head. Well, that's just by the way. And the scripture said, Solomon finished what was in his heart to do for the Lord. And in verse 12, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 12. He said, and the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, the Lord himself appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, this is God's word. Glory to God. This is God's word. I have heard thy prayer. God said to Solomon, I have heard thy prayer. Our God is a God who hears and answers prayer. Glory to God. Our God answers prayer. Our God hears and our God answers. So we must have confidence that God he has an answer as every prayer according to his will. Amen. And God heard. Then God came to Solomon. God said, I've heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to, to myself for a house of sacrifice. The, the, the Solomon said, yes, the house you have built for me. God said to Solomon, the house you have built for me, I have accepted it. You know, when we offer sacrifice to God, God has to accept it. 
And that is why we should offer sacrifice to God in the way that God asks us to. Sometimes we want to offer to people what we think they should have. And we sometimes we treat God that way. We want to give God our own service. But God said, no, give me my service. Do it the way I want it done. Oh, glory to God. Do it the way I want it done. And some of us spouse, or, you know, don't, don't do things for your spouse the way you think it should be done. Find out the way he or she likes it and do it for her or him the way he or she likes it. You might want to impose your interests, your likes, your habit on your spouse, but no. And no, find out from your spouse how he wants it, how he likes it. And give it to your spouse how he likes it, how he wants it. The same thing applies with God. The Bible said we should come boldly, Hebrews 12, 28, that we should receive grace to serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. There is an acceptable way of serving God. And there is an unacceptable way of serving God. So to serve God, we have to serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Glory to God. So the scripture said, God said, I have accepted the house as a sacrifice unto myself. Hallelujah. But God said, now, in verse 13, 2 Corinthians 7, 13, God said, if I God shut up heaven, hallelujah, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts, to devour the land. Or if I send pestilence among my people. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my things and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. Now my eyes shall be open and my ears are turned unto the prayer that is made in this place. For I have chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever. And my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. Oh, glory to God. What a day. What a day. What a day. Hallelujah. What a great day. <laughs> Amen. The scripture said, God said, if I God shut up heaven, this is not man, this is not Satan, this is not devil, this is not demon. If I, God, the omnipotent, the omnipresent, the all-knowing, all-powerful, the God that have all the answer, the God that can do undo, the God that can open the door and no man close, the God who opens the windows of heaven and pours out blessings that there will not be room enough to receive it. And God said, if I shut up heaven, if I, God, shut up heaven, you can open the heaven. And this is how you can open your own heaven. He said, if I bring disaster, if I allow disaster, if I allow calamity, if I allow failure, if I allow disappointment, if I allow frustration by reason of your action, he said, you can turn it around. The key is in our hand. We can change the situation. Satan does not have the final say. Mm -mm. There is no hold Satan can build that God cannot demolish. Uh, I refer, there is no hold that Satan can build that God cannot demolish. There is no hold that Satan can build that we cannot demolish as children of God called by his name. Here God is giving us the key. That the reason David said, before I was, aff before I was afflicted, I went astray. Mm. The Bible says God does not willingly afflict the sons of men. That is Lamentation 3. Amen. So before a child of God can be afflicted, there must be, the child of God must have gone astray. There must have been sin. There must have been, uh, uh, either whether your personal sin or a, a generational sin, whatever it is, Satan does not have a legal right to attack and afflict a child of God Unless he finds a legal right and argument against a child of God. That is why the Bible said, t t the Bible told us in, in, tells us in Ephesians chapter 4. You know, Ephesians chapter 4. I read it. Ephesians chapter 4. The scripture said, verse 23, And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man. 
Do you put on the new man, walk in the spirit, and you will not fulfill the loss of the flesh? There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. You know, so the scripture says, put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. When you put on the new man, walk in righteousness and true holiness, Satan does not have a legal ground to bring accusation or hinder your manifestation or do anything against you. You are afflicted. And the scripture said in verse 25, Wherefore putting the way lying, putting the way lying, when a child of God is lying, Satan can build a case against you and hinder manifestation. He said, speak every man truth with his neighbor. When you are not speaking the truth, you know, in the realm of the spirit, it can be, a, it can be, it can be credited against you. God is just, God is right. And God will not cover up his children that has not repented. It's a legal thing. It's a legal thing. God is just. God is righteous. And he said, Wherefore put away lies, and speak every man truth with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. Verse 26 is where I'm going to. I mean, verse 27. But verse 26, Be ye angry and sin not. When you are angry and refuse to forgive, you have sinned. And when you sin, you give place to the devil. That is what they say. He said, be ye angry and sin, or let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. When you, when you are angry, when you have unforgiveness and bitterness, when you are lying, when you, those are actions of unforgiveness. When you are not working in love, you are working in error. When the child of God is not in love, and the danger is that none of us is perfect in our actions. Christ is our perfection. The, 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 the danger that causes this thing is that when the child of God is not conscious that what he has done is sin and not repent, then Satan uses that open door to begin to come in and still kill and destroy. So repentance is deliverance. To be delivered from things, some things, we, it requires genuine heart faith repentance. Repentance is not, I'm sorry, repentance is turning from your sin and making a right turn, making the right decision, making the you turn from the wrong things, from the wrong word and wrong action. Amen? So, if you are struggling, keep up the repentance genuinely in your heart. The Bible says, confess your fault one to another. And pray for one another that you may be healed. So when it becomes a struggle, you look for somebody that you can trust. And tell him about your struggle, your weakness, your failings, your fault. He said, confess your fault one another. Why? Why is he saying confess your fault? It is to break the legal ground of Satan to accuse you in the realm of the spirit. He's the accuser of the brethren. Yes, he can make case against you. And the righteous judge we not be able to do anything unless we repent. Amen. Unless we repent. Repentance is deliverance. Repentance is deliverance. They said, be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your right. Neither give place to the devil. You can give place to the devil in your life by your action. Actions Sins, transgressions, and iniquity not repented of. So, the man of God said, can Haggai said, be quick. Three things you need to do. He said, be quick to believe. He said, be quick to repent and be quick to forgive. Be quick to believe God's word. And be quick to repent. And be quick to forgive. These three things, when you practice this, thing, Satan cannot be the case against you. It cannot be the legal case against you. Be quick to believe God's word. Be quick to repent. And be quick to forgive. Because unrepented sin, you know, Satan uses them as a legal right to be the case against us. The Lord told me one day I had a dream and I saw at the back of my house, and there was a bean by the door. And the bean has been there. The dustbin has been there. And things that we threw in the dustbin were brought rust. And the, the, the rust on the bean 
made the door, the back door, to be rusty. And because the back door was rusty, it was no longer closing appropriately. And I said to myself, that was years ago, and I said to myself, oh, look at this bin. And why have my wife left this bin and let these things in the bin to rust? Why has she, you know, allowed these things to continue, you know, to rust? And, and so, uh, and, and in that dream, I said, now the door is open and, and the, 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 the door is open, you know. Then I said to myself, I must close it and get rid of those things. And when I woke up, the Lord said to me, my children has made me a liar because they don't believe me. They don't believe my word. They don't act according to my word. They act contrary to my word. That, that, and the Lord ministered to me that the, the being there represents sin, unconfessed sin, unacknowledged sin, and unrepented sin. He said, they are the being beside the door. And they bring rust onto the door. And the, door, the back door rust and open for the enemy. And these are anger. These are hearts we bottled in. These are disappointment and frustration. These are ill will and ill thoughts in our heart and mind. They defy our hearts. So, to be free from them is to repent of the things, of the sins. That's what God is saying. He said, if I shut up heaven, that there be no rain. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, if they would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, that is the key. The key to deliverance is repentance. Look at the nation of Israel. Until the nation of Israel disobey and live under, under sin and transgression, no nation defeats them in battle. Until when they sin against God and they, 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 they have broken the covenant, then God allows oppression to come in. And each time they repent, truly repent, God sent a deliverer. It happened again and again and again. So the deliverance was always initiated by repentance. Each time they repent, there is deliverance. Each time they repent, there is deliverance. Why? It is the repentance coming in alignment, divine alignment and agreement with God and acknowledging God, you are just and right. We have sinned. Forgive us and have mercy on us. Daniel in captivity inter in, 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 interceded for the nation. In Daniel 9 9, he said, Oh God, to us belong confusions of faces, but to you belong forgiveness and mercy, even though we have rebelled against you. He what he was doing, the, he was repenting on behalf of his of his of his nation, on behalf of his forefather. That is also applicable. We not only repent of our sins. We also repent of the sins of our bloodline. <clears throat> it's important. Jesus has delivered us. Jesus has set us free. We are free in Christ. But there are issues of life that Satan used legalism because he's, he's an accuser of the brethren and accuses us and uses this error. Things we have not repented of. Things we take for granted. Things we say everyone is doing it so we can do it. Satan uses it to hinder manifestation of destiny. He uses it to hinder our glory from shining. He uses it to hinder our breakthrough. So God said, if I shut up heaven, you can open it. All you need to do is to pray, seek my face, and turn from your wicked ways. Repentance is deliverance. Repentance is deliverance. There is, the nation of Israel never had, never have to have a special thing done. Then all they needed to do is repentance. And not even the whole nation, a couple of people coming together, priests and prophets and king coming together, you know, repenting and bringing the reformation. Each time they do that, God always showed up. There, have, there, there, there is no record of any time in the scripture that the people repented that God did not come through. All they knew. So repentance is deliverance. 
So it doesn't matter what your hope, stronghold, what Satan is using against you in the realm of the spirit. All you need to do is sincerely repent. Repent from the dust, from the, from, from the bottom of your heart. When God came, came to Job, God said, Job, and revealed himself to Job after Job had made the case against God and stood and justified himself. When God showed up, Job said, Lord, I'm sorry. I repent in dust and in ashes. I've heard of you, but now I've seen you. I was wrong, you were right. And that is what when the captivity of Job was done. And God asked Job, friend, you have to repent. And asked Job to pray for you. So repentance is deliverance. God said, if I close heaven, if I sh this is not Satan. So if Satan close heaven, you can open it. If you can open the, the heaven, if we can open the heaven that God himself shut by our prayer and repentance, then no, there is no doors that Satan can shut that you cannot open. All you need to do is sincerely repent. How do we receive salvation? By repentance. How do we stay saved? By repentance. So repentance is deliverance. God said, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked with them, I will hear from heaven, forgive their sins and heal their land. He said, my eyes shall be open. <laughs> and my ears are attend to the prayer that is made in this place. God come through when there is repentance. It does not matter the devil or the demon that are flitting you. If you genuinely repent from your heart, from your heart, from your heart, and turn to the Lord, the yoke will break without nobody praying for you. Genuine repentance. Repentance of your sin. Repentance of every sin that, that may be affecting you from the bloodline. When you repent, the yoke will be destroyed. Yes, I believe it. Repentance is deliverance. In First John, it is the blood that answers for us. Whatever case that is against us, the blood of Jesus is what answers for us. Now look at this. God said, we need to understand, the Lord did not save us from sin to continue in sin. The wages of sin is still there. Just because you are saved does not mean sin has no consequence. Still, still, have, still have. The sting of death is sin. The sting of death is taken away by Christ. The yoke is destroyed. But when you continue in sin, you empower the sting. You revive the sin. With, and I'm, I'm emphasizing that there is no man that does not commit sin. But I'm emphasizing being conscious that when you do something wrong, you have to repent. And you need to nullify and plead the blood of Jesus. Because Satan uses every situation to build a case against us. Amen? And the Bible said in 1 John chapter 1, the John, John writing here, I read from verse 3, he said, That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that you may also have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and also with the Son, Jesus Christ. And this is right one to you, that your joy may be full. He said, I'm writing this to make your joy full. How does your joy become full? Joy becomes full when you are fulfilling destiny, when you're having manifestation, when you're having your prayer answered, when you're having things working as it should work. Your joy will be full. He said, this is what makes your joy to be full. I'm writing to you that you might keep the fellowship Praise the Lord. He said, then, then, he said, this then is the message. First John chapter 1 verse 5. This then is the message which we have received ahead of him and declared unto you. That God is light. In him is no darkness at all. God is light. And in God there is no darkness. God is right. In God there is no wrong. Hallelujah. God is life. In God there is no death. God is love. In him there is no hate. He's just. And he said, if we say we have Fellowship with him and walk in darkness. We lie and do not the truth. If you say you have fellowship with God, you are a child of God, you have intimacy with Christ, and you are walking in darkness, darkness is contrary to light. He said you lie. It's not true. It's not possible. Why? He said, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. How do we walk in the light? We walk in the revelation. We walk in by faith in the grace of Christ. 
We are in Christ. We abide in Christ. We set our mind and our affections on things above. We are led by the Spirit. We do what is right. And when we are wrong, we repent. Praise the Lord. Christ is our perfection. We are not perfect in that sense. But God expects us to walk towards perfection. God expects us to live in the light and walk in the light. He said, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we must be honest. We must acknowledge our weakness, our fallings, our failings before God. It's not building a sin consciousness. I always repent. In my repentance, I know I am the righteousness of God. I know that I don't accept condemnation. You have to learn to repent without accepting condemnation. Because I'm in Christ, because I already have righteousness, I repent of everything. And ask God to forgive me. Because I want to think like Christ. I want to act like Christ. Any action that came out of me that is contrary to the nature of Christ, I always repent. You don't have to say everybody does it. Jesus is our standard. So anywhere I fall short of the standard of Christ, I repent. Lord, I'm sorry I shouldn't do that. Help me to do better next time. Even when I'm talking to my child or talking to my wife or talking to anybody i always know when i walk out of love then i repent i don't accept guilt or condemnation no i know i'm not perfect but i'm aiming for perfection i'm working for perfection so i when I, when i do something i don't bother what somebody think of it what i what i my consciousness is what christ think <laughs> I'm living to please him, not man. When you live to please Christ, then it's easy to deal with people. You know, you see, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not enough. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just. To forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have no sin, we make him a liar. His word is not in us. Amen. It's only in repentance that the blood of Jesus cleanses us from every unrighteousness. Amen. There are, I understand there is a school of thought that says, oh, when you are in Christ, you don't have to repent. Each time you sin, the blood automatically cleans you. No. I almost... <laughs> Believe that, but no, it's not. So. There must be repentance. The blood is speaking. With, there must be agreement with the blood. If we do something wrong, we must acknowledge that what we did is wrong. The, the, the honesty, that is the reason for repentance. The honesty. That, Lord, I agree that you are just and faithful. You are righteous. And my act is not righteous. And I lined up with you. I agree with you. I humble myself. You are my perfection. So he said, if we confess our sin, you must confess your sin. How do you confess your sins? If you don't, if you don't acknowledge that you have sinned, then you will not confess your sin. Unless you acknowledge that I have sinned, what I've done is wrong. So some people, they cover up things. They hide. You know? So if you do not acknowledge that your standard, your attitude is wrong, you will not repent of it. And you continue like that. And Satan uses that to begin to afflict you and hinder your prayer and hinder your manifestation. The Bible calls him the accuser of the brethren. Amen. If you look at John chapter 2, it says, My little, first John chapter 2, here, verse 1. It says, My little children, these things write out unto you that you sin not. I am writing to you that you sin. It says, And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus the righteous. Why do we need an advocate with the Father? An advocate is the one who pleads our case before the Father. Why do we need an advocate? We need an advocate because we have an accuser. <laughs> we have a prosecutor. We have the accuser of the brethren who accuses God day and night. So that is why we have an advocate and our Father is the judge. But we must repent. And when we repent, there is deliverance. Oh yeah, the nation of Israel, they offer the blood and sacrifice. When they bring, the, there is a, a the, 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 
the once in the year offering that the priest, the high priest, offered by going to the holies of holy once in the year for the whole nation. You know, the, that one is accepted. But every individual person still bring their offering when they sin. They still bring their offering when they sin. They still confess their sin. They still put their hands on top of the goods. If you don't transfer the sin from your hand to the head of the good, it will not be carried by the goods. The sin Jesus has borne, he has borne it, he has set us free, but our transgressions must be repented before God. We must acknowledge and consider. He said, if we confess our sins, you can't confess unless there is repentance. And he says, it's just and faithful to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us. And to cleanse us. To cleanse is to wipe away. And the sins not forgiven and confess is a sin not forgiven is a sin not cleansed. So believers need to walk in consciousness. This is holiness. This is how we, we work out. We work out our righteousness. We work in holiness. Amen. We don't do things because everybody else is doing it. We don't follow the popular culture. We have a kingdom. We have a principle. We have a lifestyle of holiness which we must continuously practice and follow after God. It's a Jesus, the righteous. It's an advocate for us. So we must repent because repentance is deliverance. When you repent, the blood speaks for you. Amen? The Bible said, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They loved not their life unto the dead. So you need to first of all surrender your life to the purpose and the plan of God. And you need to testify with your words and with your life about Christ. And you need to agree with the blood. And you need to speak the blood. And you need to ask the blood to cancel every allegation against you. Every legal right Satan has against your life. You have to repent and ask the blood of Jesus to nullify them. It is the blood that answers. When we say, I plead the blood of Jesus. When in the court somebody says, guilty or not guilty, I plead guilty. So in the court of heaven, we plead the blood of Jesus. We put forth as our defense the blood of Jesus. I love that. Hallelujah. To make a plea, to so put forth the defense. So our defense is the blood, but we need to repent of our sins. He said, if we, if we, if we, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not enough. If we confess our sin, He is faithful and just. God is faithful and just. He is a just God to forgive us our sins, not just forgive, but to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. He dismisses our lawless names. Amen. When we repent. And Satan has no legal ground. The Bible says, Submit yourself therefore unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee. Apostle Peter said in First Peter 5. You know, 8 and 9 said, Be sober, be, be vigilant. For your adversary, the devil, is seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith. We resist him first of all by our lifestyle, by your repentance. So repentance is deliverance. If you forget anything I've said, God said, if I God shut up heaven, that there will be no rain. If I allow enemy, any affliction in your life, he said, if you as my child will genuinely repent. So in other words, heaven does not shut until there is a disobedience. Lord have mercy. When the heaven is shut, when we repent, heaven will be open. That is the way it works. Throughout the scripture, it's like that. So let no man deceive you. Let no man deceive you. When you repent from the bottom of your heart, and if you are having an issue that you've been trying to resolve and you've not resolved it, then go before God as judge of the heavens and the earth. And that's God, I come to you as the judge of the heaven and the earth. Show me, Lord Jesus, you are my advocate. Reveal to me, Holy Spirit, you are my advocate. Show me what is it that the enemy has against me. What allegation, what accusation that is against me. What tongue is against me. Then you repent genuinely. And that's God to forgive you. And that's the blood of Jesus to speak for you. And nullify the voice of accusation. The Bible says every tongue risen against you in judgment Tongues against in judgment, you shall condemn. But you cannot truly totally condemn them if you are still living, if you are still, you know, living in the sin, if you are still 
helping the situation that the, that the enemy is using. So you must turn, you must repent. God said, if you, if my people who shall call by my name will humble themselves and pray. And turn from their wicked ways. I will hear from my mouth and give their sins and heal their land. So I pray for you right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray whatever allegation, accusation, complained against you by the adversary that is taking away your rights, in the name of Jesus, I speak that the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, son of the living God, answer for you. Every altar, every altar speaking against your life, let the blood of Jesus answer for you. Whatever it is, Satan, that has given Satan legal right to afflict you, I ask that the blood of Jesus speak for you. In the name of Jesus, let the blood speak for you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare you blessed. This week you shall be blessed going out, blessed coming and blessed in the faith. Let the blood answer for you. When your name is called, let the blood of Jesus answer. Glory to God. Whenever your name is called, let the blood of Jesus that speak better things than that of him speak for you. Agree with the blood, but the blood is speaking for you. Be blessed. See you next time. Shalom. Glory to God.